welcome to the I Ching Cafe. My name is Belinda Dabston, and it is our monthly I Ching overview for July 2024. I hate to say it, but half the year is done. It just feels like yesterday we were tuning into working with June, and here we are working with July. So on that note, let's just go back to June. Let's cast our minds back to what was the I Ching asking us to pay attention to and how can we take that learning into the new month, how we work with our flows of change. Yes, we had hexagram 35, progress, the opportunity like the sun rising above the horizon to gently and beautifully and wonderfully make great progress in the month. Things to do to work with supporting that progress and get it going, but a wonderful opportunity to get somewhere. So I'm sure that if you look back at your month of June, there were things that you were undertaking that moved you forward, that there was a sense of things starting to move, starting to progress, starting to gradually bring in the light and bring you what you need. And we also had that hexagram 21 biting through, you remember? biting through the thing that's blocking our nourishment and so the month also brought us opportunities to be decisive to take action to be vigorous to be energetic to take the gap to seize the moment to get rid of the things that are in our way and to hold people around us accountable this hexagram 21 is very often about holding someone to account or calling out bad behavior or inappropriate behavior or realigning someone back to what they've committed to do is that kind of like biting through decisive energy right taking the lead okay so very interesting energy what were the things where you were making wonderful progress in the month what were the things where oh you had to bite through things that were in your way and it wasn't necessarily easy or simple it required a vigorous biting attack right you bite down on the thing that's stuck in our mouth and we bite through it and we release it so very interesting energy and i trust that you were biting like crazy all right and taking advantage of the opportunity to make that wonderful progress if there was something that came up for you please do share a comment we always love hearing your comments okay so let's get into (laughs) july just the other day we were covering june feels like things are accelerating and it feels like June was quite intense. So let's see what July has in store. Okay, intensity is probably the word too, but in a different way. Okay, so let's get into it. We have our first hexagram for this month is hexagram 58, joy. Okay. This is a wonderful hexagram with the doubling of the lake trigram. So it's an intensification of lake energy. Lake is about expression, exuberant teaching, communication, sharing, collaboration, lots of interaction, lots of talking, lots of engagement with other people and cultivating an openness to sharing and talking and engaging and teaching and really just interacting with others and creating that energy for others okay this is a wonderful month if you're wanting to do some training of your team or you're wanting to uh, spend time with your family talking collaborating or getting into a collaboration project with someone this energy is wonderful to work with we will find that for all us introverts we would have completely talked ourselves out by the middle of the month that's okay But there's that energy of like, talk, 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 talk. Okay, lots of interaction and lots of bubbly, wonderful energy. If we can tap into this energy, there is this contagion of joy that we can spread to other people. Now, what's really important with this hexagram is that joy comes not from a place of wild emotion. Okay, we're not talking about hysteria. (laughs) We're not talking about unadulterated followings of passion okay we're talking about cultivating the higher principle of joy of higher pursuits of pleasure all right of finding things that are meaningful of sharing meaningful things with others and connecting on a deep level of joy going from indulgence and pleasure which is also fine okay there's no judgment on that 
but it's like, how do we take it up? How do we take it up from just doing something? Because it's just fun, okay? It's good to have fun, and you are absolutely allowed to do that. But how do we take it up a notch? How do we build it up to pursuing higher joy, things that are deep and meaningful and profound, that as we tap into them, we share them with others. It doesn't mean we don't have fun, okay, because this hexagram is about having fun, but it's about not getting stuck there, okay, not indulging too far, too much in the riffraff, okay, taking it up, all right. Now, this month, four changing lines. I'm going to go through each one, and there is a technique where you can discard, if we've got four more lines uh, in a hexagram, you know, things are changing so much, they're kind of like, poof, into their second hexagram already, and you can read the lines in the outcome hexagram, or the second hexagram, that are not changing, read them in that position. Anyway, uh, we're not going to do that today. We're going to just honor the lines, and we're going to go through all the lines, and what I suggest you do is you make some notes around the timelines, because we can now break up the month into a little bit of sections, okay, with these four lines as they work through, starting at the bottom lines and working right through the top. And what we can do is put a time frame to that. And I always say the time frame is educational, right? It's a test to see what happens, right? Don't <laughs> set your watch by what I'm about to say. Just Take it in and see how it goes for you because you might find all four lines, you know, hammer you at once, all that come in the reverse order. So I'm going to give you a timeline on them, but it's not necessarily the ultimate, ultimate for everybody. Just observe your life and see what happens for you. Okay. So we have changing lines in the second, third, fifth, and sixth position. So in a way, they're the top two of each trigram, okay, of the joy. So our first line, and we can read them as a period of right about six days, okay? So we have the 6th, the 12th, right about the 18th, 19th, the 24th, and then the end of the month. So it breaks up the month into these cycles, okay? So let's get into each of these changing lines. Right, in the second position, this line says, a wonderful opportunity, okay, presents this wonderful connection. And we should lean into it. Okay, so you've got to work out of all the four lines, which one is which. Sort through in your life as you observe what's happening, which one applies to which changing line, okay? And there's this opportunity that comes up, and we have to be in our higher principle, in our higher pursuit of joy, not going down a rabbit hole of lower and lower pursuits of pleasure, okay? This line is saying, please don't do that. Stay focused on what's really meaningful to you, all right? Don't get caught up in the urge of just losing yourself in the moment. Stay focused on what's really important to you, your principles, and give yourself to this opportunity, this joy, this opportunity to connect with something really powerful and meaningful. It will transform your life. So there's a wonderful energy of seizing the day, of seizing a moment, an opportunity that presents right about the first week of July, see how it goes, but there's a thing here around, make sure you stay in your principle. You stay in pursuing your highest principles in this process and go from there. And then in changing line three, okay, this talks about an interesting opportunity comes up, but it's not for you. Okay. In a way, this echoes some of the sentiment around this whole hexagram and the previous line, which is pursue the higher pleasures. Okay. So the opportunity is indicated with this line comes along, but it's sensory, right? It's temporary, sensory, lower vibration. It might be fun, but it's not really yours, okay? It's not at your vibration. It's not at your your level that brings you a connection to real meaning, okay? And what you're being warned about is to not go down that rabbit hole that is part of this whole hexagram, okay? There's a warning here. Do not go down the rabbit hole on this thing. This opportunity is not for you. So what you have to be is we all have to be decisive when we look at the month, right? As this one comes up round about the 6th, round about to the 12th, okay? What is coming up round about then, right? Remember, keep your critical faculties alert. That is, looks interesting, looks fun, but 
Does it have substance? Does it connect meaning meaningfully to your values? Does it move you forward in the path that you are here to do? Or is it kind of like a side road that's fun, but actually you come back to the same point at the end of the day? So there's discernment, okay? What is that opportunity in changing line two, which is give yourself to this. It transforms your life. Go for it, okay? And this one, which is there's no substance here for you. It's not yours, okay? How do we discern? What are the criteria we use to discern between these two different energies of line two and line three? And which one is which? And that's what we're going to be confronted with. So in line five, our next one is all about this wonderful opportunity comes, okay? This surge of opportunity, exciting, dynamic. Oh, okay. This joyous connection, okay, full of energy. What it does, and we're talking now a period of time around the 12th to the 18th, 19th, what it does is it brings wonderful energy, but it also stirs up all ghosts, right? It stirs up all issues. It brings things up that need to be resolved. Uh, so there's a bit of a challenge here with this opportunity that we really should give our energy to it and accept the challenge that in saying yes to it, there are things that we have to deal with and do it anyway. Okay, so we, we seize the challenge, we have courage, and we recognize that, oh, there are some things I'm, I'm uncomfortable here that I have to work through, old issues, old stories that have come back, but I have to tackle it, I have to have the courage, lean into it and work with this opportunity. Once again, a third aspect of this joyous opportunity where we are having to be discerning which one is which. And then in line six, our fourth changing line, from around about that 19th to 24th, 25th, that period of time, and this changing line says, there's something here that's really important we need to hold on to. Not let it slip through our fingers. Not let our apathy, perhaps, or our reluctance to commit, whatever it might be, slip away. We've got to grab this thing, and we've got to hold on to it because it's very, very important. It's a long-term joy. Okay, it's a long-term source of joy. And what we could do is just go, meh, meh, God, okay. Hold on to it. What's important and meaningful. So I think as we navigate through these four different dynamic energies in the month, really taking us through these very intense kind of shifts in energy throughout the month. There's these four things, okay? I would doubt that for all of us that, you know, these four lines talk about one particular issue going through a variety of different phases. I would say there's probably like four different personal business, whatever, you know, things that we are going to be connecting through throughout the month. And hopefully as we go through the month with this intensity, with this opportunity, all right, that's in front of us, these opportunities that are here that we develop the ability to discern. And my sense is looking at these changing lines and this hexagram, what we are learning, where we are growing up this month is leaning into the joy, learning how to connect to joy, okay? Some people have no idea how to do that, okay? Learning how to fun and be in pleasure and remain connected to higher principle, to deeper, meaningful joys that bring lasting goodness and bring lasting goodness to the people around us, okay? They allow us to share and connect and build bridges. And there's this wonderful energy with this hexagram and all these changing lines of wonderful connections that we can build in the month to come. So where does it lead? All those changing lines, all that energy, what is the transforming hexagram that comes out of that? And that is hexagram 30, radiance. We have the doubling of lake and joy, and now we have the doubling trigram of fire. Radiance is this beautiful flame, it's the sun, and it shines brightly. And the brighter it shines, the more others can see, the more we can see. So it refers to us clinging to what's really important. Remember those higher principles, our wood that we burn right, as the flame, clinging to quality wood right, that gives sustenance, it keeps the flames alive and shining brightly for others and for ourselves. And as we shine brightly, we see things we hadn't seen before. So this hexagram always is about clarity, seeing clearly, having perspective, 
shining brightly and giving others permission to shine. So we look at these two hexagrams for this month. It's like joy and radiance. I mean, this is a wonderful power combo here. The two sisters shining brightly and exciting energy and sharing with others. Both these hexagrams are about lighting up others and sharing and engaging with others and opening up to it. We're being asked to embrace the joy, embrace the fire, embrace the radiance within us and open up and connect meaningfully with other people. So as I said earlier, extroverts are going to be full of energy at the end of this month <laughs> and introverts are going to be, I need a little dark cover just to recover. Okay, we can do this. So a wonderful energy this month to work with, very different to last month, but certainly an intense opportunity to really connect and really talk and really shine and really see and see the things we really, really need to see and help others to see what they need to see, to lead and to inspire and to energize and to motivate and to engage and to collaborate. These are all the words we're being asked to focus on in the month of July. So shine brightly. We're all going to be shining very, very brightly in July. Thank you so much. If this was meaningful, as always, a like, thumbs up would be really great. And of course, if you're new to the channel, subscribe or on the podcast version, hit the follow button. And I'll see you soon for our first weekly overview for July, where we get into what is the I Ching asking us to focus on for the first week. So I'll see you there very soon. Mm -hmm.